Good morning. Happy last Sunday of uh, September, and uh, we will be entering the fourth quarter, no, of 2020. So, how was your 2020? Ang isa daw sa pinaka um, uh, walang kwenta daw bilin nitong 2020 eh, yung planner. <laughs> anyway, welcome to LA First Church of the Nazarene, the Filipino congregation. And uh, for this morning, we have a beautiful topic. Again, of course, uh, we we are in this series of uh, trying to encourage everyone using the Word of God and, uh, uh, siempre lifting up the name of Jesus. No, in uh, whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think. So for this morning, we'll talk about Jesus. Sabi mo sa akin mo, Jesus, lover of my soul. Right? Yeah, he's the lover of our souls. And he holds our hearts, no, because he is the lover of our souls. Yep. So, maganito, I'd like to share to you a story, a story about Jesus, no. Uh, when he talk to, no, uh, when Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman, it's in John four. Let's open our Bibles. So if you don't have one, you can uh, read don sa ating uh, screen. So let's start. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Mas sumisikat na daw. No? Si Jesus kaya sa kay John, yun yung pagkakaintindi ng mga Pharisees. Eh, of course, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, right? And uh, in verse 2, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee para makaiwas na rin sa mga antibiotic na mga Pharisees na to. In verse 4, now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Shikar near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Yun, doon yung nakilala yung Samaritan woman. Alam niyo, ang Samaria ay malapit na lugar sa 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 kanila at uh, ang mga tao dito ay mga pinsan nila. So, dito yung mga half-breeds. Kung mapansin nyo, meron tinatawag na The Good Samaritan Story, yung tumulong doon sa taong uh, na nakawan at nagulpe. So ito is it's a part siya ng mga tao na to no he's from Samaria. Ganun din yung Samaritan woman. So itong mga Samaritan na to since half breed sila sa mga Hudyo kasi kapag half breed medyo ano niyan may prejudice, medyo parang may pagka racist ng konti sila whatever. At uh, kasi gusto nila full-blooded eh. So, baliktad naman sa Pinoy culture. Pag half-breed ka, nako, uh, ta-artits ka na. Malamang sa Pilipinas. Malamang eh, pinagkakaguluhan ka. Or, uh, at uh, kadalasan ng mga half-breed, magaganda ang itsura, di ba? Pero ito, sa mga, yung mga Samaritans, ayaw nila. No? For some reason, uh, they despise them. So, Dito, so well na to, nakilala, yung, nakilala ni Jesus yung Samaritan woman. Na syempre, yung mga Samaritans, medyo aloof sa mga Hudyo at uh, umiiwas sila. So dito tingnan natin kung iiwasan ba siya ni Jesus or iiwasan niya si Jesus. No? So tingnan natin kung ano nangyari. Verse 7, When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? In verse 8, his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So mag si Jesus. Wala yung mga disciple niya bumili ng kanilang chibog. Verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews not associate Samaritans. So, sabi ng babae, eh, ng Samaritan woman, eh, hudyo po kayo eh. Ako ipo'y Samaritana. Paano po kayo manghihingi sa akin? Hindi naman ako pwede lumapit sa inyo. Kasi you considered, uh, kinoconsider nyo kami na unclean. No? So, uh, kayo mga hudyo, hindi naman kayo nagipag-associate sa amin. Ano yung dito, kahanga-hanga yung tinura ng ating Panginoon. Talaga namang lodi natin to si Lord eh. Kasi, no, 
hindi siya racist eh. Wala siyang prejudice. No? Wala siya yung tipong, ah, dito kayo, di, dito kami. O puti dito, dito itim. O yung dilaw doon, dito yung blue. I mean, wala siyang ganun eh. Wala siya yung, o babae ka lang, wala kang pwedeng gawin. O, wala, wala siyang dinidiscriminate. In fact, mahal niya lahat eh. Kaya nga sabi, Jesus, the lover of our souls. At dito kitang-kita yung pagkatao niya, no? na talagang nauhaw siya. Hindi lang kasimple yung kwento. Gusto niya lang makiinom na uuhaw yung ating Panginoon. At uh, in verse 10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, kung alam mo lamang, ineng, yung ano o sino ang regalo ng Diyos at kung sino yung humihingi sa iyo ngayon, No, nag-ask sa iyo ng favor na humihingi ng maiinom. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. No, kung kilala mo lamang yung kausap mo, kung kilala mo lamang yung yung regalo ng Diyos sa iyo. Kung, kung alam mo lamang no na pwede kanyang bigyan ng living water or sa Tagalog tubig na uh, tubig ng buhay, di ba? May tinapay ng buhay, no? meron din tubig ng buhay. Alam niyo, sa panahon ngayon, people are ignorant about God. Aalala ko nung hindi ko pa rin kilala ang Diyos, napaka-ignorant ko rin sa Diyos. Hindi natin alam na uhaw na pala tayo at hindi natin alam kung paano mapapawi ang uhaw natin. Hindi lamang uhaw na physical kundi uhaw na spiritual. We are all thirsty and no we have no idea how to quench the craving, the thirst. Pero dito si Jesus sinasabi niya kung alam mo lamang. No, it pictures yung panahon noon at panahon ngayon parehas lang. Kung alam niyo lamang. Kung sino yung tinatawag na regalo, if you knew the gift of God and that is me, Jesus. The lover of your soul. Kung alam nyo lamang, masabi niya doon sa babae. At sinasabi niya rin sa atin sa, sa umaga na ito, kung alam mo lamang. No? Na ako yung regalo, ikaw mismo you will ask no? for a drink. At bibigyan kita ng tubig ng buhay. So magkat yung babae sa so verse 11, sabi niya, Sir, uh, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with the well. Is deep. Baga, he is trying to answer base dun sa, sa, sa daladala niyang karunungan, sa daladala niyang wisdom, sa kakayahan ng pwedeng makita ng kanyang mga mata. Kaya ang tanong niya sa Pagnan, where can you get this living water? Parang tanong din nung ano eh, ni Nicodemus eh, paano ka mabubuhay muli? How can you be born again? Babalik ka ba sa nanay mo? Hindi ang tanong, tinanong din si Jesus sa first 12, are you greater than our father Jacob? Well, remember Jacob, we become Israel. Well, remember Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, yung pinag-usapan natin tuwing Wednesday. Na ito yung 12 tribes of Israel. At kung saan dito sila nang galing. At kung saan itong well na to, no? eh, may pagpapmerong kahalagahan sa history no? ng bansang Israel sa 12 tribes of Jacob, mas magaling ka ba doon sa aming ninunong si Jacob? Ay, nako. Siguro sa isip-isip ng Panginoon, kung alam mo lang. Minsan tinatanong natin ng Panginoon, magaling ka ba talaga? Karapat dapat ka bang tanggapin bilang Panginoon at kapagligtas? Kaya mo ba talagang baguhin yung sitwasyon ko? Kaya mo ba akong pagalingin? Kaya mo bang ayusin yung addiction ko? Kaya mo ba akong ayusin yung relasyon ko? Kaya mo ba akong uh, ayusin yung buhay ko? Siguro, ang isasagot ng Panginoon eh, kung alam mo lang. If you only knew. No, sabi niya, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his livestock. Nagtatanong siya, 
base sa kaalaman niya, sa kanyang karunungan. Pero ito yung sagot. If she's asking, ikaw ba mas greater ka doon sa ninuno namin? Ikaw ba mas magaling ka ba sa aming mga Pilipino na, na kay Dr. Jose Rizal at tinitingala namin bilang pambansang bayani? Mas magaling ka ba kay Manny Pacquiao? Mas magaling ka ba doon sa mga taong tinitingala namin? Kung alam mo lang. Ikaw ba yung sinasabi mong regalo? Ano ba yun? Yun na nga eh. Kung alam lang natin that Jesus is the greatest gift of all time. Of all time. He's the greatest gift. Dahil mismo yung paglapas ni Jesus, it signifies love, redemption, mercy, forgiveness. He's talking about himself. About yung gift. Sabi niya, kung alam mo lang yung regalo sa inyo ng Diyos, that is Jesus. That is Him talking to the Samaritan woman. In verse 13, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Lahat ng umiinom dito, kahit siguro yung ninuno mong si Jacob. Right? Kahit siguro yung 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 mga sumunod na tao kay Jacob. Kahit siguro yung mga existing na tao sa panahon ngayon. Lahat sila mauuhaw matapos uminom dito sa tubig na to. In verse 14, But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. But yung tubig ng buhay na pwede kong ipagkaloob sa kanila kahit kailan hindi sila mauuhaw. Dahil yung tubig ng buhay na to ay ako, it, re- it represents our relationship. It represents the salvation. It represents the love of Jesus. It represents how much I love your soul. It represents how much I want to forgive you if you, if you will be, if you will just turn away from your wicked ways. No? Turn around ka dun sa scenes mo, repent, ask for forgiveness. Ako, yung living water. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Because that is the plan. After you turn away from your wicked ways, you forget about all your sins, humble yourself to God, ask for forgiveness, accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior, that's the, that's the ultimate goal for you to live with Him in eternity. Remember the, the guy who were crucified? Sa tabi ni Jesus, sabi niya, mo ko kalimutan, Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus, you'll be with me. I'll see you in paradise. Because that's the plan. Kailangan lang may humility sa puso natin. Na aminin yung kasalanan, mamingi ng tawad, at tagapin siya bilang Panginoon at kapagligtas. The woman said to him in verse 15, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So, kita niyo yung perspective ng babae. No? Yung perspective ng babae, tubig pa rin. <laughs> tubig na physical, sabi niya. Nasaan ba itong tubig na to para hindi na ako babalik dito at ako'y sasalok ng tubig dito sa balon na to? Hindi niya pa rin nagagrasp na ang sinasabi ng Panginoon ay siya. Pero nandun na, nasa tamang tumbok na eh. Baga, nasa tamang pathway na eh. Kasi nakuha niya na yung principle eh. May need ako. Ngayon, kailangan ko lang maintindihan yung parallelism ng physical need ko na tubig, eto, walang, walang, walang katapusan, hindi na ako sasalok ng tubig dito, pag binigay na ako ni Jesus, panalo. Iko-convert yan na lang yun sa spiritual parallelism. Nakapag si Jesus, tinanggap ko. Everything will be provided. I will be protected. I will live a better life compared to the sabinubukoy. Actually, not better. The best life there is for me. I will leave you. Uh, yung design niya talaga sa akin. You see, when... She said, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. She's trying to 
seek this water, this physical water, at the same time, deep in his, deep in her heart, no? She's also trying to seek, baka meron pang ibang sinasabi itong Panginoon na to, itong propeta na to. Deep inside her, no, we are all pre-wired, kagaya niya, pre-wired tayo to seek a Savior, to seek a Messiah, to seek a person, a being above us who is capable of taking good care of us. That's why I want to encourage you. No, you're, you're listening today. You're watching this video today. Keep on seeking Jesus. Do not stop. Do not stop reading. Do not stop praying. Do not stop attending Bible study. Do not stop listening, watching these kind of videos. Not necessarily itong videos. No? Ang daming videos ngayon sa Facebook. Kung saan ka masaya, kung saan ka natutuwa, kung saan ka natututo, saan ka, saan ka lumalago. We are not here to compete from one another. We are here no? to, to, to help one another. No? And Together, we will lift up Jesus sa harapan mo for you to keep on seeking Jesus. That's why I'm encouraging you. Find a local church. Find a, find, find a pastor who can disciple you. Find a friend na who is spiritually matured enough na mag-disciple ka. Habang hinahanap mo si Jesus, itong mga tao na to, simbahan na to, pwede makatulong sa'yo para mas lumagok at makilala ang Panginoon. In, in verse 16, it says, He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. Sabi niya, Sige na, tawagin mong yung asawa. At bumalik kayo dito. In verse 17, sabi niya, uh, I have no husband. She replied. Eh, totoo naman yun. This time, Jesus is trying to confront the sins of this woman. We need to understand kasi. Jesus is promising us a living water. Tubig na bu ng buhay. No? Nandyan din yung tinapay ng buhay. Siya lahat yan eh. Pinapangako niya to. Banal na Diyos siya, makipagrelasyon siya, pero aayusin ka muna niya. Sabi nga eh, let's go straight down to business. Kailangan maintindihan mo muna yung sinasabing kapatawaran. Eh para maintindihan mo yung kapatawaran, dapat mo muna ma-realize na may ginawa ka mali. Right? So Jesus is trying to confront the woman, no? Not necessarily the woman na sinisisi niya kasi Jesus loves the sinners and He hates the sins. It's trying to confront yung sins ng babae. Ano ba yung sins ng babae? Eh, madami siyang ano, babe. <laughs> Just like us. When Jesus is confronting you with your sins, dalawa lang ang pwede mong reaction eh. Pwede kang mag-react kagaya ng ginawa ni Peter. Di ba? Mahi siya ng tawad, bumalik siya sa Panginoon. Pwede kang mag-react kagaya ng ginawa ni, 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 ni David, mahi siya ng tawad, bumalik siya sa Panginoon. Pwede kang mag-react kagaya ng ginawa na sa Maritan woman. Oops, ako pala ito tinutukay mo, Lord. Ito pala yung mga kasalanan ko. Pwede kang mingin ng tawad at tumalik sa Panginoon. O pwede ka rin mag-react kagaya ng ginawa ni Judas. Nalungkot dahil alam niya may kasalanan siya. Pero humingi ba talaga siya ng tawad? Bumalik ba siya sa Panginoon? Instead, he killed himself. You see, pag may naririnig kang preaching, Kapag may naririnig ka na, 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 na Bible study, na nagsasalita, o Bible binabasa mo na para ang sakit-sakit sa'yo, parang alcohol ba na nilalagay doon sa sugat mo, abay magsaya ka. Dahil God is confronting your sins. At kung nararamdaman mo yung pain, ibig sabihin may pakiramdam ka pa. Wala pang kalyo yung puso mo. Dahil pinaka nakakatakot na stage yung magkaroon ng kalyo yung puso mo. Right? He's trying to confront the sins of this woman. No, at the same time sa atin. No, individually ngayon, he's trying to confront her sins. At ikaw, ang 
tao na tanging nakakaalam lamang. Meron kang mga kasalanang hayag at may mga kasalanan ka na tinatago ko na ikaw lang ang nakakaalam. And God is trying to confront you right now. Pwede naman kasi tayo lumabas sa bahay natin, magpakita ng tao, holy-holy tayo, malinis tayong tingnan, babay tayong tingnan, tayimik tayo, hindi tayo nagmumura. Mukha tayong magaling na tao, mukha tayong kagalang-galang. But that is not who we really are. Kung sino tayo ay sino tayo sa harapan ng Panginoon. Dahil itong Samaritan woman to, maayos naman. Maayos na nag Wala naman siyang nakikitang ginagawang kasalanan. Pero that's not who no, she really is. Yung anong daladala niyang kasalanan, batid ng Panginoon yun. At ikaw ngayon, batid ng Panginoon yung pagkakamalit kasalanan mo. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, na Jesus said to her, You are right. You are right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. Kaya tama ka, wala kang asawa. What you have just said is quite true. Sabi ng Panginoon, tama ka. Huh? He's trying to confront the woman. Pero look at him, how he confront the woman. It's so loving. Right? Walang condemnation kang It is somehow condemning the scene but walang attack doon sa babae. No, ang attack doon sa scene. It's so loving. It's a, it's a, it's a rebuke of love. No, sa, sabi niya, tama kay. Wala kang asawa. In fact, lima ang naging asawa mo. At kung sino yung kinakasama mo ngayon, tama ka, hindi mo siya asawa. Kinakasama mo lang siya. Live-in partner mo lang. What you have just said is quite true. That's an in your face. No? The, the, na confronting scene na ginawa ng Panginoon. Here's the thing. Pag kininfront ka ng Panginoon, may nabasa ka sa Biblia, may napakinggan ka ng sermon, may napakinggan ka sa Bible study na tinan niyo, meron kang napanood na, na scene sa movie na parang nangungusap sa'yo si Lord na ayan, ganyan ka, you need to change. Those are your in-your-face moments. God is trying to confront your sins. Huwag kang magtampo. Huwag kang maghinanakit. Ay talaga naman masakit. The truth will always hurt. But here's the thing. Now, if you will look beyond no, doon sa pa-victim-victim, at dapat maging pa victor victor humble yourself to god and ask for forgiveness and acknowledge oh sorry lord si david nga king na eh. sabi ni nathan it is you the adulterer the killer murderer it is you david eh hari yon pwede niyo masabihin ah ganun ba nathan sige pakain sa leon to hindi eh Hindi, eh, minsan tayo, galit tayo sa messenger eh. Yeah. Eh, ilan na ba na member sa church, ang umalis ng church dahil nasaktan sa preaching ng pastor? Anong pakailam naman ng pastor na isi-single out ka? Hindi naman siya magpupuyat na Sabado ng gabi para pag-isipan ka kung paano ka niya itatrap. <laughs> Hindi, ang salita ng Diyos ay salita ng Diyos. Ginagamit siyang pang-review, pang-turo, pang ng buhay. Kung hindi mo tatanggapin ng tama, ikaw lang lalo ang masasaktan. Dapat yung attitude natin, parang si David. Okay. Ari ako, pwede kong patayin lahat na nasa paligid ko dahil mainit ang ulo ko. Pero hindi ko gagawin kasi ako mali eh. Ba't ako magtuturo? Bakit ko papatayin yung messenger? Tayo ganun eh. Ah, ganun ba? Sinabi mo yan ha? Lagot ka sa akin. Hindi. Ang Diyos, lagi nagpapahatid ng confront ng pagconfront sa kasalanan natin. Makinig naman sana tayo. Kagaya ng ginawa ng Samaritan woman. Na-realize niya, oops, ouch. Booking ako. Alam ni Lord. Lima naging asawa ko at tama tama daw sinabi ko, wala akong asawa kasi kinakasama ko ngayon, hindi ko asawa. Verse 19, sir. The woman said, "I can see that you are a prophet." 
Well, siyempre, eh, biro mo, nahulaan niya yung sitwasyon niya. Pero sa to lang, hindi naman hinulaan ni Jesus eh. Alam niya na si Jesus ang Alpha and Omega. Wala kang kasalanan pwedeng itago sa kanya. Maaring hindi malaman ni Boy Abunda yung chismis sa'yo, pero alam ni Jesus, alam niya kung ano yung mga ginagawa mong mali. Sabi dito, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors, our, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where, must, where we must worship in Jerusalem. Panginoon, nakita ko na isa po kayong profeta kasi you have this wisdom. Akalain nyo, alam yung nangyari sa buhay ko. Wala naman nagsasabi sa inyo, wala kayong nakita. At yung mga ninunyo nyo po na hudyo, dito nag-worship yan eh. No, itong mga hudyo po, na kiniklaim po nila, itong place na to, eh dito rin kami dapat mag-worship. That is somehow, eh, she's in a stage of nearly believing. Right? Malapit na, konti na lang. Ikaw kapatid, nasan ka? Nandun ka na ba? Are you nearly believing? Kay Yeso Kristo. No? In verse 21, habi ni Jesus, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Alam mo, Ineng, maniwala ka. Nadarating ang panahon na, na sasambahin mo ang Ama sa langit, hindi dito o hindi lang dito sa bundok na to O kahit sa Jerusalem man lang. You Samaritans must worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Bakit hindi nila alam? Kasi sinashut down nila ang Panginoon sa buhay nila. Ganun din natin. Ganun din sa, sa buhay natin. Hindi natin kilala yung Diyos kasi sinashut off nat. Sina, kumbaga, naka, nasa labas siya ng bahay natin. Eh. Huwag kang papasok dito kasi alam mo yun, killjoy ka eh. Masisira yung desire ko sa pita ng laman, yung addiction ko sa pag-inom, papakailaman mo yung pagdadrugs ko, papakailaman mo yung boyfriend ko may asawa, papakailaman mo yung alam mo yung pagiging bastos ko sa magulang ko. Papakailaman mo lahat eh. Diyan ka lang sa labas, Lord. We worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. That's why it is very important for us to learn from the Pentateuch. Yung tinuturo nga natin to yung Merkulis. Na si Jesus, no? came from the bloodline of David. He's from this Jewish bloodline. In John 17.3, it says, and this is life eternal. Ito ang buhay na walang hanggan. That they might know thee, the only through God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. No? Ito ang buhay na walang hanggan, kundi makilala ang totoong Diyos, ang totoong Heso Kristo, ikaw Heso Kristo, na pinadala para sa amin ang tubig ng buhay. In verse 23, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers, true worshippers, No? will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. Who are these true worshiper? Ito mga true worshipers na to, ay hindi lamang mga Hudyo. Ito ay ang mga taong tumanggap sa Panginoong Iso Kristo. Kasama na dito mga Hentil or mga Gentiles. True worshipers. Hindi ito yung basta kumanta lang sa Panginoon. Hindi ito yung basta sumayaw lang sa Panginoon. Ito yung sumasamba in spirit and in truth. Sabi dito, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Hindi pretentious. Hindi showmanship. Kundi really worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. And His worshipers must worship in the spirit and 
in truth. There's a lot of kinds of, you know, form of worship. Madami. Isang parte lamang ang pag-awit ng pagsayaw. Ang tithes and offering ay form of worship. Ang pamumuhay ng may dangal ay form of worship. May integrity. Mabuting pagpapakilala sa mga tao. Isinapapamuhay ang salita ng Diyos. It's a form of worship. These people who are living a holy life are the true worshipers of God. Because they are worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. In verse 25, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. Alam ko po na ang uh, Messias or Messiah o tinatawag na Kristo ay padating na. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. Oh no! Sabi niya dito, pag dumating po siya, alam niya po, i-explain niya lahat sa amin. Eto na naman. Sa, lik- sa likod siguro, sa, sa loob-loob ni Jesus eh. Kung alam mo lang. Hanggang ngayon, madaming hudyo na naghihintay ng Misaya. Ay, kung alam lang nila na dumating na at muling babalik para sa iyo at para sa akin. In verse 26, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am He. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Isa Kristo, no? ako na nagsasalita, tinuturan mo. Ako ay siya. Ako ang Messiah, sabi ni Jesus. Here's the thing. Kanina, confronting scenes, tapos next stage, almost believing, nearly believing, eto na. <laughs> Moment of truth. Pinabagsak na yung bomba eh. Boom! Pinahayag ni Kristo. I, the one speaking to you, I am He. Maari na sa punto ko ng buhay mo ngayon, kapatid, na sinasabi niya sa iyo, I, the one speaking to you, I am He. Alam mo na kinakausap kita matagal na. Alam mo na tinatawag kita matagal na. Alam mo na kinukol ko yung attention matagal na. Alam mo na ayaw ko ng mga pagkakasalang ginagawa mo matagal na. Alam mo na gusto ko humingi, humingi ka ng tawad. At alam mo na papatawarin kita. Alam mo na gusto ka ng buhay na maganda. Bigyan ng buhay na maganda. Buhay na walang hanggan. Because I am He. Ako yung Messiah. The thing is, believing is a key factor. Alam mo eh. May role ang Panginoon. Gagawin niya lahat. Relentless yan. Relentless ang Panginoon. Talagang todo-todo. No? Patipato. Hahanapin ka. Hahatakin ka. Mamahalin ka. Pilit ka. Alam mo yun? I-include sa circle niya. Pero kung nagpumiglas ka at ayaw mo, ay yun, gentleman ng Panginoon. Dahil sa langit, naniniwala ko, lahat ng nandun, walang pinilit. Nagkusang loob. Gusto sumama. Kaya ikaw, meron kang participation eh. Kailangan maintindihan mo yung tinatawag na faith. Ito na yung grace, binibigay na oh. Faith, manampalataya ka, maniwala ka. No? Sa binibigay sa'yo. Believing is the key factor here. Kagaya nung, nung key factor na ginamit ng tama nitong Samaritan woman. Alam niyo dito sa kwento natin, sa John chapter 4 na to, No, as we as we try to summarize it, Jesus met a Samaritan woman at a well. He asked her for something to drink. She was a little surprised because in those days the Jews didn't have anything to do with the Samaritans. Sabi niya nga, how can you ask me for something to drink? At sabi ni Jesus, if you knew who I am, you would ask of me, and I would give you living water. As we recap, no, alam ginawa niya, she immediately began to look no, into the natural, yung physical, yung sarili niyang wisdom ginamit niya. Pero mabuti ginabayan siya ng spirit ng Diyos. Eh. Sabi niya, but sir, you don't have anything to draw water with. Wala ka namang pagkukunan ng tubig. You don't have any kind of bucket or pail. Wala ka namang, wala ka namang sidlan. How can you give me living water? Lapit na. Panalo na to kasi alam na yung principle eh. Susunod na dito yung confrontation. No? 
Susunod na dito yung almost believing. How many times do people no, do the same thing today? Sa totoo lang, yun ang, ang tanong. Ilang beses ba na, na mga tao ngayon, eh, ganun din ang turan sa Panginoon, ganun din ang reaksyon. God tells us He's going to do something great in our lives and we start looking at things in the natural. Right? And before long, we talk ourselves out of it. But we have to remember the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is very little. Sa totoo lang, God, God can take something that is ordinary, breathe on it, and turn it into something that's extraordinary. Ordinary yung babae lang naman yun eh. Right? Despise pa nga yun kasi Samaritan eh. Kakasalanan, lima yung asawa. Oh. May kinakasama pa siya present time. Pero sa totoo lang, manipis lang yung linya na nag sa ordinary and extraordinary. At yung linya na yon si Yesu Kristo ang nagdudugtong. From ordinary, pwede kang maging extraordinary. God can take something that is ordinary. No? God can take something na makasalanan. God can take something na putik na pwede niyang gawing napagandang masterpiece. Pwede niya convert sa gold, sa diamond, yung isang charcoal. No? You can breathe on it and turn it into something that is extraordinary. Breathing means you are being cleansed. Yes, he can because sabi niya, I am he. Ako yung tinuturan ng mga ninuno mo. Nauna ako kay Jacob. Nauna ako kay Isaac. Nauna ako kay Abraham. In fact, nauna ako kay Noah. In fact, nauna ako kay Cain and Abel. Nauna ako kay, Ab- kay Adam at kay Eve. Dahil ako ang gumawa sa kanila. Right? You to be reminded that No, alam niyo, don't just look at things in the natural. Look at the greatness of God. Maraming madami tayong dahilan sa panahon ngayon. Kaya dyan ka muna, Lord, sa labas. Huwag ka muna papasok sa buhay ko, sa puso ko. You need to stay focused on what He can do and embrace all He has for you. Kapatid, are you struggling today? Kagaya ka rin ba? Ng... Kasi mga Samaritan, sino mayaman yan eh. No? Are you struggling financially? You need Jesus. Why is he so concerned about your finances? Oh, hell is the lover of your soul. Kapatid, are you struggling with your relationship? You need Jesus. Why? Because he's the, lo- he's the lover of your soul. He loves the soul of the Samaritan woman na even though a lot of people, even yung mga kasama niyan, disciples, Nire-reject itong mga to pero siya mismo, wala siya. Hindi siya nagdi-discriminate. Are you struggling today? no Kasi yung babae na yon is obviously struggling with the relationships. Ships. Dami. Dami niyang boyfriends. Eh. Are you struggling today with impure thoughts? I'm sure yung, yung babae na yon sa dami niya na nakasama sa buhay na lalaki. Isa sa mga struggles niya to. Pero sa atin, ikaw na nanonood ngayon, are you struggling today with impure thoughts? Hindi mo ba mapigilan yung sarili mo manood ng porn? Hindi mo mapigilan yung sarili mo na, na kung ano yung mga ginagawa mo? Alam mo, hindi na tutuwa ang Diyos. Are you struggling today with loneliness? Kagaya ng babae na yun at punong-puno ng kalungkutan. Pero na nakilala niya yung Panginoon. Di ba? Saya-saya niya, bumalik sa baryo. Nakilala ko yung Messiah. Are you struggling today with loneliness? Probably because of pandemic. Are you struggling today, no? Of depression, anxiety. Jesus is the lover of your soul. He's here with you. Are you struggling today with worrying? I mean, nangangamba ka ba sa mga bagay na hindi mo alam? Na hindi pa dumarating, o maring hindi naman dumating? Or are you struggling today with worrying again? <laughs> yung paulit-ulit, yung cycle. A new worry is, na, eh, worry is the sin of not trusting God. And if you will just trust 
Jesus, the lover of your soul, my goodness. No? Talaga naman, maniwala ka sana sa mensahe ng Panginoon sa iyo sa umaga na to. If you are struggling with something today, take it to God in prayer. Call, it, call on Him. He is with you. He's the lover of your soul. Tsaka maganda dito, ang pangako niya, no? hindi siya lahaya, hindi siya sasungaling. Eh. Sabi niya, with God, all things are possible. Posible ko. No? Kung paano yung ginawa ko sa Maritan woman, kinausap ko, binaba ko, nilapitan ko, minahal ko, tinuruan ko, pinakilala ko yung sarili ko, hinayag ko yung sarili ko sa kanya. Pinatawad ko siya, inais ko yung buhay niya. All things are possible sa buhay mo. Sabi sa Hebrews 12.2, talaga, all things are possible. Sabi sa Hebrews 12.2, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Sino si Jesus? The pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right? So we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Alala ko lang yung song as we end. Sabi dito, ating title ng song, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. No, kagaya ng title ng ating uh, sermon for this Sunday. Sabi dun sa lyrics, I worship you, my Lord, until the very end. So with the Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I, wa- I will never let you go. Kagaya ng attitude ng Samaritan woman, this is it. Ganda ng kwento sa akin, pinaliwanag sa akin lahat ni Jesus. This is it. I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. Imagine mo naman, Lord. Lima yung asawa ko before. Ngayon, inaayos mo yung buhay ko. Set my feet upon a rock. And now I know. Ikaw yung rock. Hindi si Peter yung rock. Petra means rock, yes, but the rock of salvation, okay, si Jesus. Si Jesus yung rock of salvation. You set my feet upon the rock. Pag nakatungtong ka sa bato, ibig sabihin matindi yung foundation mo. Hindi ka basa-basa mahuhulas ng, ng, ng dagat o ng, ng wave. Sabi niya, now I know. Ngayon alam ko na. I love you. I need you. Though my world may fa- fall, fall, I'll never let you go. You're my savior, my closest friend. And I will worship you until the very end. Siguro kinakanta mo, no? Habang pinabasa natin. You know, that's it. Go ahead, sing it to God. How I wish I can sing it for you. But just want to share to you those lyrics. No? And remind you that Jesus loves you. And remind you that... Uh, Jesus loves your soul. The Lord is reminding us right now that we are firstly a spirit being. No? That is with a physical body. We are not a physical body with a spiritual being. We are all spiritual being because our God, we have a spiritual God. So stop looking at temporaries. Stop looking at things na pwedeng maabot lang ng ating mga mata. Buksan mo yung pananampalataya mo. Tanggapin mo siya. Bilang Panginoon at Pagligtas. Let us pray. Samahan niyo ako mga kapatid at manalangin tayo sa Panginoon. Hallelujah. Let us close our eyes and bow our hands. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner just like that Samaritan woman. But we believe, Lord, that you died upon the cross for us. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And we believe that on the third day you rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for us. We accept you. We accept you, Lord God as our Savior, our Lord, our God, our friend. Come into our hearts, Lord God, and set us free from our sins, Lord. And because you are our Savior, we shall not die, but have everlasting life with you in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Heavenly Father, we also pray, Lord, that uh, today we lift up our eyes off 
our circumstances and set our focus on you. Lord, we know that with you, only with you, all things are possible. Thank you for loving our souls. We're glad you are the love of love. We accept you as our Lord and Savior. Show us your ways, show us your love, and all the good things you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you are blessed. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Wednesday. This is your LA First Church of the Nazarene, the Filipino Congregation. Happy 36th anniversary on September 30. Uh, it was founded September 30, 1984. And the LA First Church of the Nazarene will be um, uh, celebrating its 125th anniversary on October 18. So please join us. And uh, also, we will be uh, having the in-person and online options for you guys. So uh, watch out for our announcement. And uh, thank you. God bless you. Maraming maraming salamat po. It's another beautiful Sunday. Thank you for having us sa inyong mga living room, sa inyong kwarto, sa inyong cellphone, sa inyong iPad, sa inyong mga malalaking TV. Maraming maraming salamat po. We hope na meron po kayo natutunan ngayong gabi. Ah, ngayong umaga. God bless you po. Bye.